Good morning guys, it's Tracy at Just Dig It Farms. I wanted to take y'all with me this morning um, before I head out to work to go check on all the animals and make sure everybody is fed and watered and healthy and good for the day. Um, Jean and I both work outside the farm and um, I work at Pebbles from the Past in Jemison, Alabama. We specialize in old garden antique roses uh, heirloom vegetables, old-fashioned perennials. We have uh, landscape trees and shrubs, annual embedding plants. We specialize in fruit, um, all kinds of fruit trees and shrubs and vining fruits. And um, I've been there, I'm going on my 10th year at Petals, and I'm responsible for all the displays and merchandising and designs. I help customers with designs. And um, I'm responsible for the permaculture project that um, I, that's kind of my baby. I started it about five years ago, Jason and I. And um, I'm responsible for managing it. So I love my job and I just, it's just such a blessing that I get to do something that I love and that I'm passionate about. And it's such a blessing that I get to work with what, who I consider the best of the best. Um, Jason and Shelly are both graduates of Texas A&M. And Jason graduated from Auburn and then he went to Texas A&M to get his master's. So they're both horticulture graduates. And um, Jason and Shelly started the nursery about 25 years ago. Jason's parents, Dr. Arlie Powell and Miss Gwen, um, joined Jason and Shelly after they retired from Auburn University and they added fruit into the equation. They are just the most knowledgeable people that I know and they are my mentors. I, they have taught me so much. Every day I learn so much from them. I just try to absorb every word that they say and everything that they tell me. And um, they're, they're not only my mentors and my employers, but they're my friends and they're, I consider them my family. So, we have a great relationship. Everybody at Petals, we all work together and we have a great relationship together. And I just love it. I just consider myself so blessed that I have the opportunity to work with such wonderful people and to do what I absolutely love and I'm passionate about. So today when I get to work, I'm going in a little bit early this morning so that I can give you guys a little tour of just one of the gardens um, and let you check it out. First, let's go check on all the sweet animals. Good morning, Jazzy. Good morning, Jazz. You hungry this morning? Uh, you hungry, Jazz? Hey, sweet girl. We think Jazzy is a mama. I think she's got some baby kittens under the house. We're gonna have to get under there and see what's going on. You want out of there? You ready to get out of there, buddy? Huh? You ready? Good morning, chicks. Good morning, chicks. Y'all want some treats? Huh? Y'all want some treats? Let me in. Let me in, girls. Let me in. Hey, girls. Hey, girls. Hey, pretty girls. They know what this green compost bucket means. It means treats.
He's always so happy to see me. He greets me right here at the door. Hey, buddy. I just love this precious rabbit. He is just the sweetest thing. He's so loving. He loves for me to pet him. Good morning, sweet Amos. Good morning, sweet buddy. Look here, Amos. I brought you a carrot this morning. You want a carrot? You want a carrot, sweet Amos? You want a carrot? Yeah. Miss Easy B and she's skittish. She we are learning to become friends. She's just now got to where she'll come take a carrot from me. Good job, Easy. Good job, pretty girl. She don't want me to touch her yet. But we are definitely becoming friends. Hi, Miss Easy. Champ. Where are you going, buddy? He is going to the creek to jump in the water. There he goes. Check on the baby chicks this morning. Where you think you're going? Hey, baby cheeks. Hello, baby cheeks. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, cheeks. Look at this guy. He wants in here so bad he can't stand it. He is a chicken murderer. We have to keep him away from the chickens. We're trying to teach him that he's got to get along with everybody on the farm. That labs are bred to be bird dogs, so we're trying to teach him to go against what he's supposed to do. Hey, baby chickies! Hello! Hello, sweet chicks! Hello! I'll tell you, it's hard to leave this place every morning. This is where my heart is. I get to go to work, go to a place that I love and enjoy, and I get to do what I'm passionate about. So I will see you guys at Petals. Here we are. Welcome to Petals from the Past. This is Zephyrin Druin growing on the arbor. It is a bourbon, very fragrant, thornless, climbing rose, repeat bloom, spring, summer, and fall. So pretty. On the other side of the arbor, we've got Rev Dior, which is this beautiful peachy color. 
repeat bloom climber so pretty as you walk into the arbor we've got these perennial borders in our parterre garden this is rose campion and white campion this is an awesome perennial this is nicotiana or tobacco plant this is a little salvia this is a salvia may night this is a great perennial. This thing just keeps blooming from spring until frost. Such a great little front edge border ground cover. And the pink one, I can't remember the name of it. This is a slender dutzia, so it's a little dwarf dutzia. It was just beautiful. We just missed its show. It's beautiful little white tiny blooms all over it. This is a Baptisia. This is the moonlight, so it's yellow when it's blooming. Climbing Pinky, which is an awesome climbing rose. It's a repeat bloomer, spring, summer, fall. Um, thorns aren't too bad on it. Tiny little cluster pink blooms. So cute. This is Annabelle Hydrangea. This is Mrs. Dudley's cross getting ready to bloom. It's a Formosa lily. Bloom flowers. It's a voodoo lily. That is a weird plant. Garden boxes. Candy tuft, which is an awesome little perennial. Uh, it's actually semi evergreen. It's a little polyantha rose. Repeat bloom, spring, summer, fall. Awesome little cluster blooms. This is Dortmund, Climbing Rose, that's Amsonia beside it, there's a Columbine, this is Red Hot Poker, such a cool plant, got some asters in here, this rose is Leontine Gervais such a beautiful rose so pretty it's really showing out this year we had um, Albert Barbier which is this one right here just covering the whole arbor going up over and going over into Lantine's Revive, and we pruned it back pretty hard this past year, and it's coming back out. Albert Barbier, spring bloomer. So pretty. Starts out with these bold yellow buds, and the more it opens up, the more it fades to this creamy yellowish white. This is a Coreopsis called Jethro. Really showy. Poppies. Brazilian bog sage. It'll have these pretty blue blooms on it. And um, it'll do really well in wet soil. And so with this rose, this is swamp rose. It can just sit in water.
and thrive. It's a native rose, southeast native. This is a Baptisia. This one's moonlight as well, so it's yellow. A little iris is back there. That's old blush climbing rose. That is an old rose. Anthony Waterer Spirea. Little deciduous shrub, about three feet to four feet. Um, the butterflies love it. These are California poppies. And that's an old fashioned petunia. California poppies. These things are so cool. At nighttime, they close up. And then as the sun comes out, they open up more. This bold, beautiful orange against that silver foliage is just awesome. So California poppies and all poppies, really, and larkspurs and Johnny Jump Ups and other reseeding annuals like that. We sow those seed in the fall and then they come back out in the spring. We let them go to seed and they just pop up all in the garden. So the cool thing about these reseeding annuals in a cottage garden is just that they come up and they feel these bare spots that are in your garden and that just helps with, um, you know, with less weeds. The more spaces that are full, the less weeds you have to contend with. So that's the beauty of reseeding annuals. And this California poppy is a showstopper. This is a Salvia gregia. This one's called Radio Red. These little greggy Gray yaw salvias are awesome. They're, most of them are like anywhere between 12 inches to 24 inches tall and like 12 to 36 inches wide, some of them. And um, they, the cool thing about them is, is they uh, repeat bloom from spring all the way until the first frost. And a lot of them are semi-evergreen, so they'll hold their foliage during the winter a little bit. And butterflies love them, hummingbirds, honeybees, they're just a great plant to attract beneficials and pollinators, and they're so pretty. This rose is Isabella Sprunt, getting ready to bloom. Here's another Baptisia. This one's got purple blooms. Square bud primrose. This is a great perennial that blooms as well from spring until frost and is pretty drought tolerant, heat tolerant. It's a great perennial to use at the front edge of a border in the garden. Bright yellow. This is a Artemisia called Valerie Thinnis. It's a cool one. It gets, you know, kind of tall and it's awesome to use in arrangements. The iris. I don't know who this is. I don't know the name of it, but it's so pretty. This rose is Katie Road Pink. It's a repeat bloomer, spring, summer, fall, shrub rose. Um, it makes awesome hips. So if you leave, you don't deadhead it. When it finishes blooming in the fall, it makes these great big, awesome rose hips that are really high in vitamin C for us. And um, the birds love them. Lots of Johnny Jump Ups. 
they get their name well. They just jump up everywhere. Little cornflowers. This is more reseeding annuals that pop up. It's all colors of these pinks, whites, purples. This rose is um, Mrs. B.R. Cant. It's like a little cabbage rose. Kind of hangs its head down. It's a repeat bloomer. Look at this May night salvia. God, so showy, so pretty. And that's the climbing pinky rose. So there's a lot of larkspur popping up in here. And we just let this reseed every year. There's some poppies in there. Our cool fish. I love these fish. The need artist at market this year had these and we brought them in and they have been a very popular item. They're just cool in the garden. All this foliage you see coming up is called um, Madrensa salvia. It's a real pretty yellow salvia. It's going to get like six feet tall and it blooms, um, starts blooming late summer into fall. Really pretty. This rose, I believe, is called Arethusa, I think. This rose is Marie Pavier. It's a little polyantha rose. Such a cute little rose. It's only like three feet by three feet repeat blooms. This is cabbage leaf Rebecca. This is the coolest plant. I love the foliage on it and the blooms is just beautiful big yellow blooms. This rose is Metabolus. It's a repeat bloomer. It's a cool rose. It's got it's also called butterfly rose. It's got um, like three different colors on here. So pretty. Peony poppies. This salvia is called Henry Dulberg. This is an awesome salvia. It is a, it starts blooming spring, blooms all the way till the first frost. This is old fashioned heliotrope. This is just a great ground cover perennial. I use this in my um, orchard. It attracts a lot of beneficials like honeybees love it, butterflies love it, all kinds of bees love this plant. And it, um, it's just a great weed suppressor. Peony poppies, these big double white peony poppies. Again, this is a reseeding annual and it just fills in all these spaces. So pretty. This is Maggie Rose. Very fragrant, repeat bloom, about three to four feet high and wide. This is Bear's Breeches, Acanthus mollus or bear's breeches. This is such a cool plant. I love the dramatic leaves on this and the blooms is so cool. It, um, it does well with some morning sun, but afternoon shade is best. There the leaves kind of get a little wilty. Here's more of our cool fish. This is called Fajoa. We pruned it pretty hard this year, but it is a cool shrub. It's um, it's an evergreen. It has this, the leaves on the back of it is like silvery. And it's got these cool blooms on them. Right here, starting to flower. And 
the neat thing is, is they're edible. They taste like sugar water. But I think that'd be cool to, if you could candy them and use them on a cake or something. But this is a great shrub. It's a big shrub, like uh, maybe 12 feet. It'd be awesome for like a privacy screen. This is a garden phlox. Can't remember the name of it. Tiny jumps up, jump ups. Spigelia or Indian pinks. This is a native for us. Yeah, it's such a cool plant. Great color. Needs some shade. Afternoon shade, preferably. Look at this awesome foxglove. This thing's so pretty. And this thing is like, I don't know what it's done, but it's like infused together or something and made this massive foxglove bloom. So neat. These poppies are so pretty. Big double white poppies. There's this, um, Hey, Chase. I had another class last night. You did? Yeah. You taking a video? Yeah, I am. Oh. You're on it.
Okay guys, so there's a little quick tour of some of the gardens around the shop. We'll take a look at some of the other gardens later. I gotta get to work. Y'all have a blessed day.